Okay, welcome to this tutorial on Blender for non-modeling mains. Uh, we're going to be covering LMT editing, principally Timos. Uh, first of all, we're going to want to import a model just for visual reference so that we know where our keyframes are going. Uh, this is the only thing that we really need to change, animation armature. Uh, this one import a body model. And in general, this is more or less a good guideline. Just because I have already one setup, we can have the full body f as well if we need it. Uh, by the same process, we just import each mesh part independently. Then we're going to want to import an LMT. Uh, I'm going to go quickly over the options here. Clear actions before import is going to delete every single action on the on the Blender scene. If it's the first thing you're doing when importing, it's not really relevant. Uh, use selected tree is useful if you want to tack more actions into whatever you're injecting. Uh, Tether to skeleton is gonna just ensure that the animations play correctly. Uh, there's ways to add this back into the model, but again, since we're not really focusing on the editing the, the animation itself, but the demo properties, we really don't need to care too much about this. Uh, and filter animation range is kind of important. It's gonna help you not have to wait half an hour uh, while the animation loads when you only want to edit one of the entries. In this case, for example, I'm only editing one, one, 101, uh, 111. Uh, and these two options are kind of important if you are if you're doing animation editing, uh, also demo editing. These are related to how the the files save things, and sometimes one animation is used for multiple actions. So to avoid the game breaking when exporting uh, those references, uh, we want to include this. It's going to take a bit to load, and. So first thing we're going to do is, uh, in Blender you assign animations to objects, so for example we can assign animation to the skeleton or we could assign animation to indiv individual meshes. Uh, we're going to go and do that. We're going to go here and go into Dope Sheet. After Dope Sheet we open the Action Editor and in the Action Editor we're going to go look for the LMT animation. Uh, all of the demos are labeled as such and all of the skeleton animations are also labeled LMT. Uh, and this is going to get us the upswing animation. We can even leave it plain if we wanted to. So, uh, what we want to look at now is the Timel actions. And for that, we're going to see something else that the LMT editor brought along, which is that on the node view, you start on compositing. You want to go to the node 343HK and open the current deactive tree. And right now, because we've only imported one animation, this is only this is the animation we've imported 111. Uh, if we imported more, this would start going down. Uh, this is the output. This is the file where it's gonna write the results. Right now, it's in injection mode. Uh, we probably don't want to write back to our original file, so I'm gonna write to native PC to a copy of the file on native PC. Uh, and this is the Timel data corresponding to the animation with its meta parameters, and. In here is uh, the list of, of actions which are getting pulled by the file at, at export time. So, for example, the first uh, Timol uh, type is going to be this action, which is collision time on object. And skeletons normally play LMT animations. The Timol controller is a special object created by the importer, which is the one that's in charge of playing the Timol animations. Uh, we're going to go straight to motion common for example uh, which has the information on iframes and super arm and whatnot for example and we can see uh, where the different properties are changing value over time uh, we can also go to motion input which is used to process player inputs and, and when to start buffer uh, accepting buffers for them or not uh, we can even check for example the, the keyframe values for individual frames one by hand if we wanted to we can see them here uh, we can select multiple and it's going to list all of them uh, this section is mostly reserved for EFX and pure Timos, not for LMT Timos. And something that we will have is that uh, these values are flags. So uh, 256, 768 doesn't mean much. So we want uh, a better way of editing this sort of flags. These are uh, tuples, pairs of two bits. So if we wanted to add keyframe, for example, we can do it in here. And for example, the last value was uh, 1,600, 385. 
and let's say we wanted it to happen earlier so we would go here we would put here and then insert keyframe and we have two new keyframes uh, we normally have to edit this this values as well the free hk parameters they are the the secondary demo controllers uh, but in general when we're editing flags like editing values by hand is is going to be tedious and the free hk importer also brings a, a utility for being able to convert numbers into their into their bit representations like here it's still this is not ideal like you you can use this for operations if you want to for example combine flags you can set a different flag from another file in here and and you get and you can even save the results as a sort of notebook uh, but this is kind of cumbersome uh, the ideal way of doing this is to after you've already already added all of the keyframes that you wanna be working with you just get the inputs and what this is gonna do is you tell it which property you wanna pull in this case we wanna pull m flag and and it's gonna give us this view uh, so in here we can see the different ways the the bit flag expressed for in each uh, time frame as the pair of bits that it corresponds to so even gonna tell you like which bits are if you express a number as a whole uh, in 32 uh, after we've done our edits like we can add one more or two more frames of buffering and we can set them as inputs uh, it's gonna update them in here and we should be able to see the, the changes yeah, like it's now 256 instead of zero, for example. Uh, meaning that we've successfully like expanded the range of frames in which it should be able to buffer an input. Uh, in general, there's not much more to it. Uh, we can keyframe properties by setting the values here. Right click and then insert keyframe on the on the value we wanna give it at each time. Uh, if we have uh, flags, we can pull them here for editing and then write them back with set inputs and that's pretty much it just in terms of nodes for example we can also if we press control we can cut links uh, which is a relationship between this particular demo like if we, we we didn't want the sound from event group one we can control and we cut it uh, we can also for example grab another animation we can go to the to import again and for example we we want to import uh, 140 to 150 uh, and we use selected tree and then we don't clear the actions before import and that should actually start uh, yeah sure enough it does uh, it expands the tree downwards has some limitations uh, because of how it's loading things and where it expects some nodes to be but in general like right now for example we could replace uh, the the Timol data for node 111 with the Timol data for node 141 and by just doing this and that's pretty much all.